Well, let's get it kicked off. Bailey's going to handle Q&A. Everybody, Q&A at the bottom. Let's keep it interactive, of course. If you're watching this as a recording, thank you. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and then leave us a comment, question on YouTube or anywhere you're consuming it. Uh, thanks so much, everybody, for coming. And once again, if you're watching this live and or as a recording, really appreciate it. Episode 157 of the HGA free webinar series. We have our very own Matt Ashley. He's a, a, a director of fundraising partnerships with uh, HGA. So really happy to have you on. Before Matt was uh, was with HGA, he was a fundraising leviathan with uh, with uh, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation and worked with so many volunteer committees in his time. You know, dozens of events every year, has a bunch of experience, and that's why we wanted to have him on to talk about this. And uh, he's obviously a, a really, really, really great resource um, for this topic and many others. Um, we have the chat function over on the side too. So any questions from y'all, please feel free uh, at any point and Bailey will get to them as we uh, as they come in. Um, Want to keep it interactive the whole time, of course. So um, let's get into it, man. Let's, uh, let's talk about fundraising committees. Volunteer committees, you know, is, is what our focus is going to be on and engaging those committees and what have you. But, um, you know, one of the first things we want to talk about is like, what is the role? And yet, you, you know, you do a really good job of defining this, Matt. What's the role of a volunteer committee, you know, when you're when you're planning an event and, and raising money? Gosh, no, I, I just start off. Thanks for having me on, Trevor. And, and, yeah. and yeah, this is we talked about this in the podcast the other day. And some of this goes back to the basics and it might sound you know, very fundamental, but I think really setting those expectations of what that role is, is really critical early on for your organization or for your new committee or your, or your established committee. So everyone understands, you know, how they can contribute, but yeah, it's, it's very different. I, you get, maybe get tired of me answering questions like this, but it's different across the board in some yeah. sense, because depending on the size of your committee, you know, small committees, sometimes a volunteer might wear, wear a lot of hats and uh, like we were talking the other day of, you know, if you have, what does it look like to have a really large committee? You try to distribute those roles out so everyone can play a, you know, play their own part in contributing, you know, something to what you're trying to accomplish. So, but I, that role, I mean, really that, that volunteers for nonprofits are really the life, are the lifeblood, in my opinion, for most of the nonprofits I'm aware of. Yeah, you've said this a lot. It's good. Let's touch on yeah. that. Yeah, and it's just you know, what they can contribute. Um, and we talked about this too, what I've seen volunteers do, which is far more than anyone you could ever, you know, a paid staff would be willing to do because they believe in the cause. Totally. Uh, really True aligning believers. them. Yeah. What if, yeah. if you're the leader of the organization or a leader of your volunteers and your volunteer organization, you know, really setting the, the stage early so people understand, you know, how, what is my role within where can I contribute? How can I can con contribute? And, uh, you know, setting those expectations of, Hey, this is my lane and, uh, and really holding that person up to, to some standard of accomplishing what you're asking of them. Right. Uh, because if you're not kind of organized and setting those expectations and, you know, having people moving forward and accomplishing what you're trying to do, you know, people can kind of get scattered within your organization and, you won't, you won't, you'll miss your goals or miss the opportunities that could have been reached had you been organized and very clear on what those roles are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So super important. <laughs> and, then, and then also a reminder that you, you might have to reiterate those, you know what I mean? Those metrics or, you know what I mean? That, that communicate those same messages over and over and over again. I mean, we, that's just common, right? It's just a, that's what we have to do with people. You know, it, it's, it's super normal when you're an occur a normal occurrence when you're managing a big group of people that are all working towards the same thing. You know what I mean? No doubt. No doubt. And yeah, just defining those roles and, and holding up a standard of this is how we operate. Right. Uh, not in a bad way, but uh, no, totally. everyone, yeah. everyone appreciates that in the end yeah. uh, because you, you know what everyone's role is and you can all go forward and there's not mixed communication and um, expectations that aren't met because of just people not understanding what their roles are. So. Totally. Yeah. Um, you know, you talk about that, you know, when it comes to, you know, putting these committees together, obviously we want the, you, you're constantly saying, cause we had this conversation quite a few times, right. And, and, and for good reason, but you're constantly saying about like, you know, putting people in, you know, the right, de defining the roles, what have you, how, what's the best way to go about finding people, for instance, what's the best, what's the best way you can 
go about finding folks for a, a committee when you're planning a fundraising event to make sure that you're maximizing the committee's potential and things like that? Like, you know, how do you, how do you go about finding the right characters, frankly? Yeah. And in some cases you're trying to find anyone and everyone that's willing to help you. Um, yeah. I would say kind of in the long term, or depending on where you're at with your organization, it's better to be patient and find the right person mm -hmm. um, or that role that you're looking to fill. Um, because you, you want to get the right person in there that's invested for the long term, because there's information and knowledge that's acquired, you know, and they'll get better and better at that role over time. Sometimes, you know, in the nonprofit world, it's just, you're trying to get help immediately. Yeah. To, and wherever you can, it's like all hands on deck. Yeah. I, right. But I, I often look, look to the business community. Um, many times those individuals, you know, have a lot of relationships and, and, uh, you know, they're, they're business people. Um, so they understand, you know, they're outgoing oftentimes and they have a good network of people that can bring more individuals in with your organization. So that's kind of where my mind goes first, yeah. but it really depends yeah. on your organization and what the, what the cause is and what community of people that believe in that cause enough that are willing to commit their, you know, personal time and money to help you. Um, but yeah, people that are oftentimes, I think in the nonprofit world, um, it's, you know, we get a lot of re retired individuals because they have a little more time to commit sure. to it. Yeah. I yep. think you need, to be, you need to be diligent about finding young people to get involved as well. And it's easier said than done. Yeah. Um, they have families and a lot more going on in their life. Um, but if you can bring those people on, they just have different networks and, you know, uh, a different set of energy. And um, they can bring a lot to the table that, you you know that that'll build a strong community within your your organization. Yep. Uh, instead of you know the the retired group as well, you need to come together and pull all age classes in to help, and you know you'll totally. accomplish. Uh, I think that's super smart because you know because folks are always talking about like um a younger donor landscape, you know, coming into the space and what have you, and that that changing over time and how the demo is certainly changing with certain groups that you always said that very eloquently that every organization, every event is so unique and has its own atmosphere. And so I understand the demo with certain organizations going to be different than, you know, charity X, Y, Z down the street, for instance, but really, that's really, really smart. Cause I was thinking about, you know, like what qualities are we looking for and just looking at, looking at a certain demo and then tapping into different networks. That's really, really smart. I think people should, um, sounds simple, but they should pay more attention to that kind of stuff and, and mobilizing a younger demo if they can, if it matches, I think that's really, really smart. Folks should rock with that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And as far as those qualities, I mean, at first you want someone that's committed to your cause that believes yeah. in it, that understands yeah. uh, what you're doing, because if they, they don't have a personal bond to it in some way, um, they'll come and help and they might do it as a favor for you, but you, they're not going to commit as much as they might had they believe in really what you're, what you're trying to accomplish. Um, I mean, second, you really want reliable people that, uh, you know, right. get done what they're saying they're going to get done in the time frame they agree to. Mm -hmm. I've seen people that, you know, are very eager to jump on board and they take a take an important role in the committee, but follow through is is really missing. Um, and it can kind of, you know, you, you can't meet so often that it becomes a, a true burden to the you know, personal schedules of people's time because, you know, volunteers time, they're, they're doing it going above and beyond to commit their time and efforts to your organization. So you just can't have that if you, if you want to be operating, operating as efficiently as you can. So I would just say, you know, someone that's reliable, strong follow through is, is really important. It sounds super simple. Yeah, it does, but, but it's so true, bro. Follow, you said follow up. I was, you know, it was like around the tip of my tongue too. It's like, if folks can't pace with you and the, and the rest of the committee and make it to meetings on time or things like that. It actually, it, it begs another question when that happens, cause it's inevitably, you know, going to happen to some folks. Oh, I mean, we hope not, but it will because we're dealing with people and people are complicated sometimes, but what happens, you, you've dealt with this before where you have to have an uncomfortable conversation. You do that early. Correct. I mean, when that kind of stuff's happening, folks aren't showing up on time and they're not following, you know, the, what you've set in place early with the transparency and, and over communicating, frankly, what the expectation is early. But if they're not, if they're not, you know, hitting the mark, so to speak, you hit that right away, right? You know, have, you have that uncomfortable conversation, typically take someone aside, hey, maybe this isn't the right fit, or maybe we can put you in a different role or what have you. I mean, you got to do that early. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, you're, you're yeah. exactly right. Same thing with working with 
any group of people, I guess, are in business, but yeah, totally. you know, conversation early and maybe you put them in a role that, you know, was an important role and they're just yeah. not meeting your expectations and you can kind of give them a chance to kind of turn things around or maybe there's a better fit where, you know, their time and efforts can be channeled elsewhere where, you know, those don't become a, you know, their lack of follow through, I guess, or doesn't become a hindrance to organizing your event per se in six months. Yeah. Um, that could become a big issue um, down the road. Absolutely. So, you want to put those fires out quick when they're yeah. little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you got, you got the right people in, in the room, you know, at this point, right. You, you, you know, high character folks that have a lot of energy, they care, they'll bleed for the mission, so to speak, different demos, all these things, just a quick recap. Now engaging, motivating people to do more. Once you have the right people in the room, give, give folks some feedback on how to go about that effectively. Yeah, I think it starts with kind of deciding your your structure, your leadership within mm -hmm. your organization. Um, and I, I'll probably repeat myself a lot in this. It, it of course, depends That's on okay. you know, what, what your committee's like, um, you know, how many people you have for one, and how you want to break up those roles. Uh, I've seen a lot in the past where a, a chair or the leader of the, the group takes on everything way too much yeah yeah way too much yeah yeah yep. that's really really harmful for a committee mm -hmm. um, because that person's holding a lot of things close people start drifting away as they don't have their own roles to contribute they think their time's not being valued or they're not you know helping accomplish something so i would say you know decide how your leadership's going to look like in the committee make sure everyone has some kind of task or responsibility and, uh, you know, they're, they're seeing directly how their time and commitments helping. Um, so that could be, you know, breaking up, it, breaking up the group into, you know, chair roles and then having subcommittees that everyone has a, a say in if they want to be, you know, or is joining that subcommittee and those subcommittees meet separately and bring that, you know, their findings back to the main committee. And it'll, I just think that setting that structure or whatever makes sense for your organization is incredibly important. Um, it's just, if you don't do that and everyone's, uh, we talked about it recently of when everyone, when you come to a meeting and you don't have a good structure and people aren't bringing forward, we, we've talked about agendas in the past, um, you know, having that strong agenda, having the chairs bring up, you know, what they've taken away and accomplished between those meeting times man, if you're not doing that and having that roles and responsibilities and structure, it's just the most basic thing is that can really destroy, you know, what you're trying to accomplish because you'll lose your best people. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Did yeah. Oh, it's right? a big turnoff. It's a giant turnoff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. Right. You're recommending subcommittees. I think that's under, I think it sounds simple, right? We keep on, you know, we're circling back. It's like, this is the right way to go about things. If you're in business, if you're, you know, just dealing with people in general. So a lot of uh, these things are true and, and mimic other parts of our lives. But, you know, um, it's not, we've had this conversation multiple times in your recommending subcommittees. Um, you know what I mean? I just think that's really, really smart. Folks don't utilize that tool enough, I don't think. Um, yeah. And that's not a difficult conversation to have with folks that are already on board, you know? No, no, not at all. And, and uh, we've talked about this before. I mean, you, you're typically involved in, in committees with people that you have a shared interest with. Yeah. So you, there's a, you get there and you like everyone because you're all committed to this, a similar cause. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy if you don't have a good structure for your agenda and the meeting time frame, to let those meetings run long. And that's really, really a hard thing. And how you can avoid that is, is having a good structure for your meeting. And some of those bigger topics, having subcommittees discuss those outside the meeting time, you know, gather the information, make and bring a recommendation back to the committee. Um, instead of trying to, you know, digest all of that information, because there can be a lot, um, especially with if you're having a fundraising event, um, there's a lot of decisions that come into place uh, of caterers, facilities, I mean, just really that category. So in, in that example, if you can set up a subcommittee that goes and investigates, you know, what facilities are available, this is the pros and cons, you know, bring back, a, you know, a, a a couple choices for the main committee to to decide between otherwise if you're bringing that all to your main meeting if you have a larger group of of people it can drag those meetings on there's nothing you can do to keep that time frame short and and respect people's time and 
typically in the evening when you're gathering together as a volunteer group outside of work hours. Yeah. So yeah, I'm a big fan of, of subcommittees and uh, trying to, if you have a new member on your sub on your committee, you know, add them into a subcommittee where they can feel that their voice is heard, where they might be a little more nervous speaking in front of your larger yeah, in group. Front of a big, that's a, that's an interesting dynamic and it's real, man. You know what I mean? Especially so they, like you said, when folks are new. Yeah. Cause you yeah, want to keep those folks on board and keep those folks engaged. Yeah. Exactly. Because if they yeah. come and join, you know, for, for example, maybe you have 20 people on your, your committee, that person steps in, they're put in the corner of the room. They don't say anything because they're new and they don't want us to, you know, say something out of turn. Right. It's pretty easy for that person to drift away. Yeah. Um, especially when they come in, you know, if, if you are planning a fundraising event, for example, if they come in halfway through the process, if you haven't, you know, kept good minutes and and sent those out and had agendas, they have no idea what's been discussed. It's right. very easy for that person to to be lost and they could be an incredible asset for you um, in the future. So yeah, it's a waste of talent sometimes, right? You don't want that, right? You want folks to shine. Yeah. Put them on a committee of some kind, subcommittee, yeah. and give them some responsibility. And typically people will step up when you do so. Totally. And you might see them shine in that role and it might you know, open the door for them to step into a bigger role uh, later on. So, give me some examples. Give the audience some examples of like some like titles of subcommittees if they haven't done this before, just something like that, just to get in the weeds a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, main, I guess, titles that I've seen in the, and this is more of a kind of an event planning committee is, is kind of what where my mind goes to is what my background, I mean, chair, um, you know, vice chair, co-chair, um, you know, ticket chair, uh, secretary or finance chair or both. That's really your, your main core. Mm -hmm. I was always a strong advocate of, of a sponsor tables chair, um, which I was supported by a subcommittee or that was really a subcommittee, but someone that kind of take the lead on such that. a huge, such a huge piece. It needs to be. Yeah. It's, it's such a value to event fundraising of having yeah. someone focus on really those core sponsorships and table sales. It's a uh, really underutilized asset, I believe, by a lot of committees. Agreed. As far as, I mean, really having a system of, of going out and, you know, acquiring those sponsorships or sponsor tables. Um, really, tickets is another one that can be supported by yeah. chair, a, a committee is helpful yeah. because that's a, that's a pretty big burden. Um, facilities, like we talked about, um, catering is a is a big decision often uh, or those could be probably coupled together totally uh, but delegating these things out like that and then and then uh, propping those people up with the help they need to get the job done is huge as opposed to, like you said you see it too much i saw it at my own daughter's school event recently and right. completely volunteer driven of course and then the principals involved and what have you and i just saw i saw one gal and then i saw another one where they were just taking on so much. And then when it ended up happening, God bless them, by the way, because you know what I mean? They're working their tails off, right? And they got real nine to five jobs too. But they took on so much. What ended up happening is, I'm kind of getting, we were talking about hits just now. Now I'm kind of getting to some misses, right? And things to avoid, right? They end up taking on too much. And then they actually become a choke point for getting certain things done that need so, to get done. And then everyone feels like they're saluting that person. And then everything has to go through that person to actually get done because there wasn't enough communication early on. There weren't these subcommittees in place. And like I said, they're all volunteers, so they didn't do anything wrong, but you get my point. I watched it because I was involved, you know, and I saw it happen. I was like, everything has to go through this gal. Oh my goodness. What a, what a, what a mass. And it's so hard on her actually, you know, not disparaging her. And, they become the gatekeeper for every decision and everything. And I was like, man, this could just be so much more efficient, you know? So sure. huge, huge idea there just to unlock that, you know, that, or, you know, the, 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 a, the potential of all the folks that you have on the committee, but then also not find that you're in a, in a spot where everything has to go through someone just to get done. You know what I mean? I just think, yeah, just huge to, to keep that in mind. hundred percent. No, I'm a big fan of that kind of decentralized leadership model. And love uh, that. Yeah. You want one person making all the decisions. You want a bunch of leaders empowered to, you know, help in their roles or their and all move in the same direction. Yeah. Committee. And then Beth bring has, the major decisions. Okay. Uh, do you okay. want to add marketing PR? And what about auctions? Oh yeah. I we Absolutely. Uh, 
yeah, marketing is another huge subcommittee opportunity. Um, you know, if you have an event, live auction, subcommittee, silent auction, or both. No question. Uh, for procuring items, for, you know, yeah. yeah, talking to donors, all the above, for Baffles. sure. really depends. Yeah. It's all I'm trying to kind of group it enough for everyone. Um, you know, maybe you have a community engagement committee and that group is, you know, takes part in whatever events you participate in or you go have a, a table or a, or a booth at. And that yep. committee focused on that. It was really everywhere you could take it. But yeah, Bev brought up two of the, the biggest ones that we hadn't hit on. So no, yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. For sure. And then, you know, we keep talking about this and we're, I guess I, I keep coming back to like, well, run it like a business, but run it like a successful one, right? But you're dealing with people. So make sure, of course, um, it'll sound obvious, but make sure you put the right folks in the right place to succeed. So the event's a, a success you know, you don't put someone out, you know, handling sponsorships and underwriting and asking folks for big checks that have a problem asking people for money, you know, that kind of thing, right? You know what I mean? So it's like, keep that in mind that we just, you know, it sounds so simple. It sounds like we just 101 stuff, but put people in a position where they can really excel. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, if you got someone going out and procuring donation items and whatnot, make sure that they're, you know, uh, the, the, the kind of folks that won't get scared asking, you know what I mean? That kind of thing, yeah. right? You know, so... Um, put people in the right position to succeed. Hey, that's a good, uh, thanks for um, alerting us, Bailey. It, are there any other questions? I want to do a call for questions right now, actually, while we're uh, not changing gears necessarily, but I had a, I had another question I want to ask you, Matt, uh, for the honest. But yeah, thanks so much, Bev, for sharing. Any other questions, you can put it in the Q&A, uh, also chat function. Um, Matt, so how much do you lean on, let's just talk post-event then, for instance, this is a, a question. And you, 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 I would assume you would lay this out, but you know, how much do you lean on the committee um, to reach out to donors and what have you post event? You know, um, you know, talk about talk about follow up post event, and let's say you, of course, you've had a successful event, everything kind of went smoothly, you raised a bunch of money, but how much do you lean on these folks and let, alert them that you're going to lean on lean on them post event to do follow up gratitude? to the donors, engaging new donors, maybe to bring them on the committee, things like that. Like, I think that's an important piece that we should talk about. Yeah. Um, I guess the first decision is kind of what that outreach looks like, what you're sharing. Yes. I, yeah. I am a talk about that. that. Yes. Yeah. Kind of, maybe it's a handwritten thank you um, that you have a subcommittee that, you know, dives in and writes some handwritten thank yous to your best donor. Um, maybe it's an email sharing, you know, Hey, this is what we raised, which equates to, this for the mission. Thank you for your help. Um, something like that. Those things are, are not a, a huge lift, but that coming to your most important donors, the people that have contributed, uh, you know, monetarily or other ways is incredibly powerful just to, to say, thank you. Thank, thank them the night of the event. Thank them after the event will just really help that stewardship and build that relationship. And hopefully they keep coming and, you know, stepping up and can doing and do more for you if they have the capacity. So, um, yeah, I just, just deciding what makes sense for your organization to do. Those are the two main ones that I've seen. They're not a huge, a huge, uh, burden, I would say. Yeah. Um, you can, you can take it to whatever level you want. Um, I've seen, you know, after a certain level of, of giving, you know, I've seen special events held after a main event where it's just for anyone that's contributed you know, X number of dollars, hey, you get a, or a, or stepped up for the sponsorship level, you get invite, invited to an exclusive event that you're part of. So when you if you start considering that, you just had to make sure that the committee that's already committed all their time to your main event, they're bought in and willing to help you execute the event, the second event or the sponsor event that you're, you know, promising as part of the, you know, what the gift is. Totally. So those are, those are huge. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of those as well, but they're also an, another event. So if you have a strong committee and people that believe in it are willing to, to jump up and help you, those can be pretty simple. Um, you don't have to make it, you know, all out, maybe like your main event is if you have a live and silent auction and all that, everything going on, you can make those pretty simple on the, for your sponsor event, those special events. Mm -hmm. Um, you just would want to communicate that and decide on the committee that, Hey, everyone's all in, or you have enough people that are all in to help you. Um, is what I, I think say. communicating that before the event for sure is so huge. I think it's such a huge opportunity. We've talked, you know, a bunch to, to a bunch of different professionals where like Amy Myers from MDA has come on multiple times and said, 
reach out to these folks the night of because you i mean you could you're recruiting for the next year's committee you know what i mean you're you know that kind of thing you, you never know and there's so many stories there's a just they abound there's so many stories about how someone comes they maybe get invited you know to your event and they give and you see them I and mean, they might be in the back of the room or they're at someone's table and you're on the committee or you're on the board for instance because this almost sounds like a board thing too right it could be synonymous where your yeah. handwritten notes phone calls thanking folks the whole nine and you have to take those opportunities you talked about networking right away you talked about engaging folks that have a network you talked about different demographics and their networks and how this is all moving in that direction super important to continue to do that the night of and post event because once i mean the, the, the relationships the donors are your the, this, this is your superpower right. you know what i mean right. i just don't folks i don't think folks harness that sometimes like and the power of that right um mm -hmm. so definitely something to keep in mind so it's like pre during post you know like this triumvirate of things that you have to be super locked in on for a successful event and successful events moving forward i love i've always loved your sponsorship um, you know, or sponsor event specific, part of me, sponsor event that you have exclusive Bev is on here. And was, you know, we, we were talking about it. We, we introduced you to her actually to discuss it as well. So super, super cool. And just another way, just like another vertical, so to speak, that you can create just being, you know, another spot, another, you know, fundraising event that you can create just by, you know, being thoughtful, you know, and thinking about it and making it exclusive for certain folks. I think it's awesome. And folks yeah. like that. I think donors love that, you know, uh, do, any other, um... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it was uh, those events can be a little more intimate atmosphere with yeah. maybe people that are most committed, or at least they stepped up from a financial standpoint to to give to you. So them coming to network with other people that have stepped up to the same capacity that they have, or whatever threshold you set it at, um, those can be really special times. And you can do some small things, um, you know, more intimate settings, uh, special speakers at big events don't give you the opportunity to yep. um, really impactful to your really core supporters um, at the, at those sponsor opportunities. So. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's huge. Just a bunch, like you just said, it, opportunities, just a bunch. There's a, there's so many ways that you, but you gotta be thoughtful. Hey, you know, you're listening, you're watching this right now, write these things down. You know what I mean? You know, see how that, you know, talk to someone in your organization about it and just start, you know, having the conversation and, you know, get the brain trust going, get the brain going in general about it. Because once again, all these things might not fit with your organization, but some version of it will, right? Or some version of it is going to be something that, that could be that could be a conversation at your organization. Because as Matt says, every organization is so different, so unique, has its own atmosphere, has a, its own, you know, um, you know, culture with the, you know, the committee and whatnot, and, and just overall, you know, vibe of the event, I suppose, right? Um, but these things are applicable. These are just good, you know, 101, you know, type uh, volunteer and committee rules or, or thoughts that you should definitely consider. Um, anything? I'm going to do another call for questions. Bailey, do you have any questions? No, no new ones. Okay. Uh, any, uh, a last call for questions. We're definitely going to give some stuff away. I didn't mention that at the, uh, at the onset uh, of the conversation. We are going to give some stuff away uh, in typical HGA fashion, but uh, anything in closing that we didn't cover, Matt, that you want to leave folks with about, you know, committees, volunteers, anything, uh, you know, we did, we just did a little left turn into, you know, board land because they can be synonymous sometimes, of course, with the outreach, yeah. but talk to me about something we, we, we might've missed for the audience. Yeah, no. And I use those terms kind of inter interchangeably. Board. Totally. Yeah. And they all should be supporting each other, frankly. Right. hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, one thing, I mean, you brought it up. I mean, putting the right person in the right role, um, but one thing I think that's important, kind of going back to that new individual joining your committee, if you can pair those new individuals, maybe maybe they join a subcommittee as part of something to do. But if you can find them a mentor amongst your committee that can kind of be their go-to person, person to ask questions, maybe that person takes them out to lunch, maybe that's your role, whatever it is. But if they have someone that kind of puts their arm around them, puts them under their wing as they're, they're joining I think you'll have a lot more retention. I've, I've seen it personally uh, of those individuals because you want, I mean, more hands make light work, especially in, I mean, no other place than the the committee and, you know, board volunteer roles. Um, so you don't want those people to to come or express an interest and they slip through the cracks and, you know, no one falls up with them or they don't feel like they're contributing or, you know, someone's kind of been there to to help them. Because once you get someone engaged for a little while, their retention increases a lot. No question. Uh, 
at first first interaction they're kind of putting their toe in the water they can they can slip away pretty quickly and you need all the help you can get um, to help you accomplish your mission so yeah, yeah. just a mentor consider a mentor for new people i love that well i mean it's just you're just creating instant synergy hopefully right you know it's you know, one plus one equals two that's fine but if it can equal five <laughs> let's do right. it you know, but you got someone <laughs> yeah. like that. It's been around the sun with you multiple times. For instance, you obviously don't want them to go. That really, you put a good person in a situation like that where it's going to actually prop them up. You know, we talk about something as well where, you know, I, I don't even want to call it like term limits. I kind of put that weird moniker on there, but you know, there needs yeah. to be, you know, you need to cycle in new talent and move people around where they're, you know, okay, this year they're going to try this because they're really good at that or whatever. And then we're going to pair. So be thoughtful with, yeah, with, with the, the individuals that you're working with and, yeah. And you find good, you know, talented folks that care and bleed for the mission, so to speak. You want to keep them on board, right? You want to keep uh, them engaged as long as possible, for sure. And you want their friends. You, you, <laughs> and, yeah. I, I would just say the other thing that gets overlooked is just, you know, we've talked about a lot of simple things, but I can't, yeah. they can't be overstated. No, enough. this is good. Yeah. Thank, these are fundamentals. Yeah. Thank you. To, whether you're a staff or maybe you're a volunteer alongside your, your other volunteers, I mean, telling how you, you telling them how much you appreciate them investing their time, you know, helping them understand what they're accomplishing, and just being very genuine about it because you should be if that's why you're there. Yeah. Um, so you can't say thank you too much. I believe, I and uh, I think it's just not said enough. Probably a lot of times. So. No question. I mean, we talk about this often. It's never a bad time to say thank you. Right. If you don't know what to say, that's always a great uh, opener, <laughs> right? <laughs> Right. And yeah. these folks are given the most valuable thing that we have. And that's our time. You know what I mean? And you're absolutely correct. Um, I like to always say is like, you know, people think no news is good news. Oh, they know I appreciate them or they know I'm grateful and the blah, blah, blah. You know what? That doesn't mean they don't like to hear it. Right. You know? So yeah, you gotta be, you gotta be cognizant of that. And um, yeah, it's never a bad time to say thank you. That's for sure. And it's a great, it's always a great starter, you know? So no, that's really good. I love that. I actually like closing with that. Uh, go say thank you to somebody, but, uh, Hey, um, we're going to give HGA bucks to everyone in attendance. That's here live. If you're watching this as a recording, I'm not going to say you missed out or anything like that because we're going to do another webinar next week, next Thursday, episode 158, same time, same channel, but everyone that's here right now is going to get a hundred dollars in HGA bucks for attending live. So we appreciate that our team, IE Bailey and our team will be in contact with you about that. If you've been here before, you know, the drill. And uh, it's fun. HGA bucks, something you can use towards an item uh, at your next event. Uh, and uh, like I said, our team will be in contact with you about how to use it. It's super simple. And uh, no, we don't have our own bank. We just call it HGA bucks. It's kind of fun. So, but uh, good stuff, Matt. Thank you so much, brother, for the time. Thank you for giving your time. And uh, thanks everybody for spending time with us today. Means a lot. We appreciate it. Don't forget to share this with someone in your network. If you got any value out of this, any other nonprofit professional or any other volunteer, for instance, that you might be working with on your committee or what have you, we appreciate it. And we will see you all next Thursday. So thanks so much. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. And thank you, Bailey. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right. All right. We'll see you all next Thursday. Thank you. Bye.